These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, now we're going to introduce a new concept, which is force. Do you remember what is the symbol that we use for force? Capital F. Capital F. Good. What is the unit for force? Newtons. Yeah, capital N for newtons. Since Isaac Newton um, invented uh, so much of this part of physics, a lot of stuff is named after Newton. So the unit here is named after Newton. And is this a vector or a scalar, the force? which means it has a direction, not just a magnitude. That's always important to know. So is force the kind of thing that we have to break into components? Yes. yes. Yeah, because it's a vector. Now we should also keep in mind, well, now I guess we'll just uh, go on here. So force. Um, let's say something has an acceleration of zero. What does that tell you about the velocity? Right. Technically, the acceleration has to be zero over an interval, and then the velocity would be constant. But that's a technicality that won't be important for this course. So we'll just say if the acceleration is zero, then the velocity is constant. If the velocity is constant, what does that tell you about your speed and direction? Speed and direction You said? Speed and direction not changing. Not changing. We don't know whether they're positive or negative or anything. If, remember that velocity is speed and direction. The magnitude of the velocity is your speed, and the direction of the velocity is your direction. So the only way a vector can be constant is if both its magnitude and its direction are constant. So this means that speed and <coughs> direction are constant. On the other hand, suppose the acceleration is not zero. What does that tell you about the velocity? It's changing. Yeah. It doesn't tell you that the velocity is not zero. It tells you that the velocity is changing. And what does that tell you about your speed and direction? To be a little more precise there. acceleration is not zero, that tells you that your speed is changing, or your direction is changing, or that both are changing. Yeah. All right. So that's, the kind of, that's how we can be very specific here about what a changing velocity means. This means that speed is changing, or your direction is changing, or both. Remember that a vector has a magnitude and a direction. So if either the magnitude or the direction is changing, we would say that the vector is changing. So even if you're only changing direction, your velocity is still changing, even if the speed is constant. So if your acceleration is not zero, that does not mean that your speed is necessarily changing. It could be your direction is changing. Or maybe they both could be changing. This is a very important little table here. Notice that the columns are synonyms. Everything in the left-hand column is a synonym for everything else in the left-hand column. And everything in the right-hand column is a synonym for everything else in the right-hand column. So you're expected when you're given a problem, if the problem tells you, for example, that V is constant, you're expected to know that that means A is zero. You're expected to be able to go back and forth between these. So that comes up a lot. Now, so far, we haven't really done any science here. This is just definitions. This is just all based on the definition of what velocity means. But it's important to keep in mind. Now, I think we already started talking about this a little. If you uh, look at the force on an object in any instant, does the force explain the object's velocity or its acceleration in that instance? Acceleration. The acceleration. Um, what that means is force doesn't cause motion. It causes changes in motion. The velocity represents your motion, and the acceleration represents the change in your motion. And again, this was a big mistake that people made for a long time. People used to think that the force directly causes the motion. 
but it doesn't. It just causes changes in motion, and we'll see why that's important. So if your acceleration is zero, what does that tell you about the net force on the object? It's zero. Yeah. And if the acceleration is non-zero, what does that tell you about the net force? It's non-zero. Now this is the first piece of science that we've done. This is the first thing that isn't obvious based on definitions. Again, people used to think that the force was based on the velocity, but in fact, it's based on the acceleration. Now, now there's a name then for this new road that I put in. Um, this is such a, a uh, Newton. Newton's what? Yeah, this is Newton's first law. Newton's first law is that when the ex um, that zero acceleration is equivalent to zero net force, and that non-zero acceleration is equivalent to non-zero net force. This is the, the most straightforward way to say what Newton's first law is. When your acceleration is zero, your net force is zero, and vice versa. And non-zero net force means non-zero acceleration. I should talk a little bit more about this concept of net force. Net force means we have to add up all the individual forces on the object. Um, so if the acceleration is zero, that doesn't mean that there are no forces on the object. It just means they're canceling out. If the acceleration is zero, there could be no forces, or it could be that all the forces are canceling each other out. Um, for example, right now, my acceleration is zero. Relative to the Earth, my acceleration is zero. But there is a gravitational force on me. It's just being canceled by the normal force from the floor. Has your instructor talked about the normal force yet? Yeah. OK. So the reason I'm not accelerating now is because the gravitational force on me is being canceled from, by the normal force from the floor. So again, acceleration zero doesn't mean that the individual forces are zero. It just means that they're all canceling out. Let's say we have an object that's moving to the right. Here we have this object moving to the right. What direction is the net force on this object, left or right? Right. Net force. Or we don't know because the velocity is Yeah, that was a, a mean trick question. Uh, but that's the, uh, the kind of trick question you can expect to see on homework and on exams. Remember, force doesn't have anything to do with velocity. That was the big mistake that people used to make. The force does not explain your motion. It explains the changes in your motion. I didn't tell you anything about how the, the motion was changing for this object. So we have no idea what the net force is on the object. No idea what the net force is. Another way to put it is, what do we know about this object's acceleration? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. We, we, did that, we did those trick questions in our previous session. We saw that knowing the velocity tells you nothing about the object's acceleration. Because I haven't told you whether this velocity is constant or changing. Until I tell you whether the velocity is constant or changing, you have no idea what the acceleration is. But if you don't know the acceleration, you don't know the net force. Uh, have you guys started talking about free body diagrams? Yes. Remember, a free body diagram is where you identify all the forces on an object. Well, one of the most common mistakes that students make is that they assume that if the object is moving to the right, there has to be a force that's pushing it to the right. But that is not true. Just because you're moving to the right, that doesn't necessarily mean there are any forces that are moving you to the right. 